Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and um, I am normally focused on autoimmunity in COVID-19. And within that framework, I tend to look at important issues that could be relevant with regards to both COVID-19 as well as COVID-19 vaccination. And so this very important study has recently been pre-printed. And so that's an important point. This is a pre-print uh, of a study that was done in, in, in Thailand looking at myocarditis in adolescents. I'm going to come to that in just a minute. And I just want to quickly encourage you that uh, if you haven't as yet joined me on Substack, please do so at the link below. And there'll be lots of posts, uh, videos and podcasts since March 2020 to give you education about what's going on. So this is an important piece of research, and I will share with you the first point about this. This was in November 2021. This is one of the posts that I did on Substack. And I asked a question, should we actively look for post-vaccination myocarditis in the young? And it was in relation to the fact that at the time they had this Travis Scott Astro World concert and there were 11 cardiac arrests on the scene, something that we had not seen before. And I thought to myself, that's significant because in order to go to the concert, you had to be vaccinated. And so within that framework was why I asked the question then. So before I say anything more about the research from Thailand, just to quickly give you some background work. This is a picture of the heart. And you can see this is a cut section through the heart. Let me just get my pointer uh, available. So this is the heart muscle cut right through the middle with the, the ventricles on this side and the atria on this side. And this here is an example of the muscle of the heart. And what I've done is I've taken a section here and these muscle fibers are running in a longitudinal fashion beside each other. And they're all tied together by um, fibrous septa and held together and they all contract together. That's how the heart muscle works all the time for your whole lifetime. Here's another section showing the myocardium. Um, this is now cut across. This is the endocardium, which is the lining inside. The pericardium is just outside. That's how the heart slides inside um, the, the sac that it's in. And then you have here individual cardiac myocytes. So these are muscle uh, cells that are connected to each other. This shows the electricity passes through them. And in myocarditis, you can end up with inflammation of these individual muscle cells. And this inflammation can then most critically lead to fibrosis. This is myocardial fibrosis that can occur. Most cases of this inflammation will settle down. This is a normal heart muscle bundle. But in a case of myocardial fibrosis, this is what could happen. And once this fibrosis occurs, you can't get rid of it. It's like kind of scar tissue. And this is why in the context of children, you want to minimize the risk with regards to myocarditis because there is that risk that could occur in children. So moving straight along, here is the paper that I think is important for us to see. So this is the paper that came out of Thailand, a preprint I will mention, and it's Sunayi um, Man San Guan, and it's cardiovascular effects of the BNT162B2, which is technically the Pfizer vaccine, in adolescents. So it was uh, done in conjunction with the Department of Clinical and Tropical Medicine. And effectively what they did, they focused on uh, school age children, two uh, prospective enrolled students from two schools, 13 to 18 years old, who had received the vaccine and they were focused on the second dose. They looked at the baseline, so they collected enzymes, baseline, day three, day seven, day 14. They initially enrolled 314, but only were left with 301 participants for analysis. And the critical thing from this is that what they found was that out of the 301 patients, one patient had myopericarditis um, confirmed after vaccination, two patients had pericarditis, and 
four patients had some clinical myocarditis. That's the thing that I was concerned about. It's one thing when someone has uh, symptoms of chest pain, but what you would want to look for in children, especially because they are low risk for severe COVID-19, at least early in the pandemic, Omicron seems to be changing a bit. You would want to look for subclinical myocarditis. And that's an important point that you would have to try and find. But why was this research not done? Because it, it's it's basic stuff. It's not, it's not complex what we're asking for here. This should be standard for what you would expect with regards to children. And what's even more frustrating is that when you look at this study here, and I'll just show you this, uh, this study quickly, this is a study that was done in 2021 looking for myocarditis in competitive athletes with infection, okay? They took a cohort of university, it was uh, 10 universities, they had 1,500 competitive athletes, and effectively 37 of them were diagnosed with clinical and subclinical myocarditis, that's 2.3% had that. So we, they did this looking specifically at cardiac, my, um, cardiac markers, they did cardiac MRI, they did echocardiograms. This should be standard. This should be what we expect with regards to children, especially when we're giving them a new technology. Why would we have to wait for Thailand to produce this kind of research? we could have very easily replicated the research that was done at the Big Ten University. That was what I was calling for in 2021. That was what I was talking about when I said, should we actively look for myocarditis post-vaccination in the young? That's the kind of research that you would do if you are looking to try and identify if this could happen, what would you do if you don't really want to see? I don't know, I, I have some thoughts, but the point is, is that this should be standard. And it's very worrying based on the peer review, it is not yet peer reviewed, but if they have technically four with subclinical myocarditis, they have two with pericarditis and one with, um, with a full-blown myocarditis out of a cohort of 300 children, those numbers are frightening. So that's the quick thought that I wanted to share with you. And the link is there for the preprint of the paper, as well as the link for my Substack. If you want to join, I'd be very happy to have you. And uh, you can read more information, more interesting insights into COVID-19. So have a good evening. Look forward to talking to you again soon.